Amen. Give God some praise and magnify him for he's worthy to be praised. Come on, clap your hands all over the sanctuary. And for those that are out there streaming, you can put a, you can put a hallelujah in the chat. Amen. God has just been so good and he deserves the best praise. Amen. So we're going to give him some glory on today. Is that okay? Let's give God some glory today. 
We've been out the sanctuary for a long time, so for those that are back here today, let's let's be excited, be joyful that we're back in the sanctuary again. Amen.
Felicia Finch and Asia Finch, Sister Helen Hughes, Dwayne Kennedy of Little Rock, Arkansas, who is a cousin of Reverend Renetta McDonald, Sister Estella Brown and the Ross of her sister in law, Sister Helen Hughes, Deacon Dan Morris, the granddaughter of Father God, we pray right now that you would just dwell upon us. Allow your spirit to fall fresh on us. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Father God, forgive us for those sins known and those unknown. Anything that is not like you, Father God, we pray that you would remove it. Oh God, our prayer list is pretty extensive this morning, but we know that there are others that stand pray right now that you would meet every need. Go by the hospital rooms, the jail houses. And Father God, we pray right now that you will touch those that are grieving. Grieving jail. And we know that we cannot make it without you. We pray, Father God, a special prayer for our nation. The political leaders that are decisions that affect all of us. Father God, we pray that you will just touch and have mercy. We pray that you will just move amongst these sin-filled streets, Father God. There are those that don't know you, Father God, that make decisions according to, to that. And Lord, we pray right now that you will just touch and have mercy. Cover us with your love and with your protection, Father God. pray right now that you will bless those men and women in the armed services, Father, who serve this country and serve it gratefully. Bless their families, O oh Lord. And Father God, we pray right now that you will just touch our new covenant family. Touch our pastor, Father God, and his family. Bless us collectively and individually. Father God, we pray that you will just have your way in this place. Bless this preached word as it goes forth from your humble servant. We pray that you will just use her to your glory and to your honor. And Father God, we will be so ever careful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name. God is such a faithful God. He's such an awesome God. And we honor him today for being faithful. We honor him for being awesome. We honor him for being righteous and a healer. Amen.
I call you faithful, Lord, you are faithful, you are so faithful to me. I call you faithful, Lord, you are faithful, faithful you are and faithful you'll be. I call you holy, your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are and holy you'll be. I call you holy, I call you holy. Your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you'll be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I call you holy, I call you holy, your name is holy. Here we go.
Hallelujah. Give God some praise for being a faithful and a holy God. Coming from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 18. It reads, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. My sermon for today is entitled Living a Transformed Life. Paul is the author of the book of Corinthians as well as 12 other books of the New Testament. Paul also wrote more books in the Bible than any other author of the Bible. He was born to Benjamite parents who were Pharisees. His parents was extreme Jews who adhered strictly to the laws of Moses. So we can see how Paul developed this extreme views of brutal violence and relentless persecution to the, uh, of the early church, and he did it well. Oh, but one day, while Paul was on the road to Damascus, to persecute the Christians, Paul was about to go through a profound transformation. He heard the very voice he was tormenting the Christians about. He heard the voice from heaven of Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of mankind. Paul was never the same again after his encounter with Christ. His transformation brought a zealous disciple for Christ. Oh, what a magnificent transformation that we all are beneficiary of. To find out more about Paul's transformation, read the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 1 to 19. Paul was writing to the believers, brothers and sisters in the city of Corinth about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. A covenant is agreement that God made with the Israelites. The agreement God made with the Israelites 
was that his blessing would rest upon them if they kept the commandment given to them by God through Moses. Exodus, the 34th chapter, verses 29 to 35. However, the old covenant was difficult for the Israelites to abide by because they was constantly sinning, which caused wrath, anger, and death. It was not that there was anything wrong with the law or commandments of God because the law is holy. The commandment is holy, righteous, and good. Romans, the seventh chapter, verse 12. The law and the commandment continue to serve a divine purpose. The Israelite, Israelites have fallen because of their sinful nature. The law was good because it was from God. The sacrifice the Israelite made did not come with or provide salvation. The purpose, thank you. <laughs> the purpose of the old covenant laws were to learn and keep God's commandments. Paul tells us in Galatians, the third chapter, verse 24, the law was our teachers to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified, acceptable by faith. God established a new covenant in which there would be no need to go to the altar to make sacrifice for mankind's sins daily, weekly, or monthly. He decided one sacrifice would be enough for all time through the shedding of his beloved son, Jesus Christ's blood. The forgiveness of sin would be part of the new covenant only because God provided a substitute to pay the price for our sins. The new covenant is centered on God's mercy and grace for you and me, which should be ingrained in your hearts. Can you see the difference? When Moses returned from the mountaintop with a veil of glory shining down upon him with the old covenant, he presented the law to the Israelites. The Israelites were to follow the commandments that Moses provided after talking with God. However, the Israelites failed to uphold their end of the agreement with God. The veil of unbelief covered their hearts, showing their unfaithfulness to God's law and commandment. Their behavior caused, their behavior caused God's glory to fade away. And in its place, failure, condemnation, and death appear. This revealed their sin, but it could not bring about salvation. The new covenant is all about changing us from the inside out, showing our humbleness in our hearts. It had a greater, unfading glory because it brings about transformation and eternal life. It is, made, it is, excuse me, it is mediated by Jesus Christ himself, who was sacrificed on the cross to pay for our sin. And the Holy Spirit now takes up residence in those who believe and trust in him. The only way the veil covering our hearts can and will be removed is by trusting in God, only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. God also provides us with a comforter, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us and helps us to live as true believers of the new covenant. Where our life in Jesus Christ is, increasingly live out and perfect it and improve. This is why the glory of the New Testament, new covenant is exceedingly greater and have eternal life attached to it. Excuse me. God promised a new covenant after the life of Moses. In Jeremiah 31, verse 31 and 34, it tells us, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. 
It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my heart, I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbors or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declare the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. If Christians today desire to grow in grace and Christ likeness, one way is to daily strive to increase our relationship through prayer and communication with God. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to study God's word, and we need to do more than just dust off our Bible. We need to read it and meditate on his word, which the Israelites did not do. They heard the word because it was spoken to them, but was not obedient to what they heard. We need to sit at Jesus' feet and soak in the word. We need to be like Mary instead of Martha, Luke 10, 38 through 40. When I hear these words, if we do our parts, the spirit will take the glorious words and transform us from glory to glory, making us more and more like Christ. This song I heard a couple song, Sundays ago, the song was, Yes, Lord, Yes. I would say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I will say, yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I will agree. And my answer will be, yes, Lord, yes. If I never knew the fullness of living in your will, I would never know how rich my life will be. And my willingness to find each thing that you deserve for the blessing you have showered over me. Lord, I give you all the glory. For what you have given me, you fill my life until I over, oh, oh, in your, I am yours to use any way you choose. You are the Lord of Lord. So how can I say no? Not only that, our relationship with God will be even better than Moses' experience. Our transforming glory will increase, lasting forever, not de decreasing, fading away. And when we focus upon the glory of Jesus, we are being transformed, transformed into an ever-progressive, increasing way in the same image, glory, Jesus, to glory, us, oneness. We are becoming more like Jesus, and we keep growing until the day we finally see him face to face. Then by the grace of God, we will be fully like him, sharing forever with him in his glory. This is what Jesus himself prayed in John the 17th chapter, verses 21 to 24, before he went to the cross. He prayed to the Father for you and me and asked, the goal is for all of them to become one heart, mind, just as you. Father, are in me and I in you. So that they might be one heart and mind with us. Then the world might believe that you, in fact, sent me. The same glory you gave me, I gave them. So they will be as unified and together as we are. I in them and you in me. Then they will be mature 
in this oneness and give the godless world evidence that you have sent me and love them in the same way you love me. Father, I want those you gave to me to be with me right where I am so they can see my glory, the splendor you gave me, having loved me long before there was ever was a world. Just like God loved Jesus before there was ever a world, he loved us while we still living in our sins. That is where we are heading, dear brothers and sisters. If we who keep our focus upon Jesus, we are destined to be completely transformed into his glory from glory. That is, his glory is the source to glory that is us as the result. If it was left up to us, we would fail just like the Israelite did when it came to obeying the old covenant. But it's not all up to us, thank God. As Paul said, this transformation occur occurred just by the spirit of the law, of the Lord. As Pastor Jude put it, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Jude, verse 24. This verse is saying to us, the more we fix our spiritual focus on the indwelling Christ, the more the Holy Spirit transform us into Christ's image. It is a truly transforming life. Lord, I give you all the glory for what you have given me. You will fill my life until I overflow. Oh, I am yours to use any way you choose. You are the Lord's of Lords. So how can I say no? Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us focus on Jesus Christ with our hearts and minds. Let us be sure that in all our doing, we keep sight of our faith continuously upon Jesus all the way to the completion of our walk on this earth. And we will see what a glorious transformation it would be when he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. May the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Yeah, 